Hello and welcome to the Practical Animal Channel. The channel is for you if you want to know what it takes to work with animals. We aim to cover the skills and personal qualities you need to land that dream job. Whether you want to work with domestic animals or wildlife, if with domestic animals, that could be with companion animals, dogs and cats, or with agricultural livestock. If you want to work with wildlife, that could be in captivity or in the wild. Whichever is your preference, we aim to offer advice on it all. This is the final video of 2021. I'd like to thank all my loyal subscribers for your continued support. Stick with the channel as it develops. It'll get ever more interesting next year. But for today's video, what I wanted to do was a, a video compilation of some of the highlights of the interviews I've carried out this year. I've delved into the archives and selected from the experts that I've talked to their answers to the question what advice can you give for people wanting to work with animals enjoy it leave your comments below if you enjoy the video please click like and pass it on to your friends and followers if you think that there is somebody who may benefit from the advice. So here it is, our final video of 2021, with a panel of experts answering the question, what advice have you got to anybody who wants to work with animals? Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. I'll be back on the 8th of January 2022. See you then. Nick, what advice can you give somebody watching this who wants to replicate your career become a wildlife author become a wildlife photographer how can somebody do that that certainly is a tough question to answer certainly to answer succinctly um the first thing i would say is i'm i'd be pretty scared trying to do it now as it was scary when i started 30 years ago um it would be even more scary now because i think it's much harder now it, it seemed very hard when I started, but it's even harder now because there's so much more competition. And crucially, it's far harder to earn worthwhile sums of money from selling images because the markets are saturated because there are so many digital images now out in the marketplace. The returns that are achievable from selling images has dramatically reduced. I earn far less purely from photo sales now, as I did 15, 20 years ago. Um, so I've had to diversify and I make ordinarily a far greater proportion of my income from organizing my photo workshops and photo safaris around the world than I do from photo sales or book sales, etc. So I think if I had to give one piece of advice to anyone wanting to start, it would be don't put all your eggs in one basket. Make sure you've got other avenues that can earn money and you have to just try and develop your career in photography piecemeal, bit by bit. But don't think you are going to be able to become a wildlife photographer and instantly earn a living. It's just not going to happen. You've got to find ways to earn, have several income streams. Now, I've managed to do it with all of them related to wildlife, writing, photography, organizing trips and safaris and workshops, and obviously giving photography tuition. But that's taken quite a while to build up. So I think anybody starting out has to be realistic that it's not gonna happen overnight. They've gotta be persistent and dogged and they've gotta think of certainly several different streams through which they might 
generate income it's not all all going to come solely from photo sales because the, the money just isn't there these days Ian, what advice can you offer somebody who's watching this who wants to work with orangutans um you have to want it more than other people <laughs> i think it's the same with any job i i always tell people that as long as your your health allows there's nothing you can't do you just have to want it more than everybody else you know you want to be an astronaut you got you got to beat the competition um but uh i think i always advise people to do what i did i think uh, getting into this sort of career or this world you've got to open doors and to open doors you've got to get to know people so i always tell people do what i did you know just get on a plane register for some conference somewhere and go and spend three or four days with you know people in the business and, and you'll suddenly find that you're sitting at breakfast or dinner next to the director of london zoo and or some scientist from hong kong or something uh, and, and making new friends and opening new new opportunities that way but just get out and meet people elaine moving on from being a volunteer people will progress in their lives to where they need a job they need to pay the bills in the field of domestic animal sanctuaries what opportunities are there and principally what advice can you offer somebody wanting to work in an animal sanctuary well i think you know at the top of this interview john we talked about my career path and how difficult i found it i think i think the first thing to say is that there are a lot of people who want to work with animals um so you know you are moving into a field which is competitive um, it's uh, probably easier than when I started because there are more places um, where you can go and work. Um, I think you, you absolutely need to think about doing some volunteering. Um, and I would do that before you actually embark on any kind of an academic course, because you may find that it's not for you. Yeah, you know, I mean, bear in mind that most animal care staff are working outside. It's a physical job. There's a heck of a lot of cleaning involved in animal care, which people don't talk about a lot, but there is a hell of a lot of cleaning. And so if you find that you don't like cleaning, you're not really going to enjoy animal care. Similarly, food prep. If you're not somebody who enjoys food prep, you're not going to enjoy animal care because if you're not cleaning, you're doing food prep. It's an outdoor job often. It's hard work. You get very wet in our climate. You can get a bit cold. We can manage all of that. But bear in mind it is an outdoor job and it's a physical job so it is hard work it's physical so get yourself some volunteering experience you know activity there are sanctuaries are always welcome volunteers to help find out whether it really is the thing for you if it really is the thing for you go and get a, a recognized qualification ideally somewhere where there's a work experience element within it so that you can then say well i volunteered and i did work experience it starts to put you on the right path and I think the other thing, as you can see from, from my learning, is you don't give up because it isn't it doesn't happen instantly. Um, just keep volunteering, keep trying. A number of the team that, that we have had been volunteering and working in a bar to earn the money they needed to pay the rent. Um, but just keep going and eventually you will get your break. You just need to just keep going. Um, there are um, good websites, you know, Animal Jobs Direct is an obvious one, other websites may be available, um, but that's an obvious one that we use a lot and I know lots of other sanctuaries use. Um, yeah, I mean, go and volunteer at Boarding Kennels if you can't get work, get volunteering work at a sanctuary, but you need to know that, that you're happy to tolerate being, you know, at times scratched, sometimes bitten, peed on, pooed on, you know, that that's what animals do to you, you know, and you've got to be somebody who goes, oh, okay, well, that happens um so so yes but the converse is why would you do anything else i uh, i spent 17 years in brazil and when i came back i uh, i took up a, a an education post um where i uh, part of the, the work involved uh, researching classes and, and putting classes together obviously uh whereupon i learned about um uh, zoo consultants a profession um how does somebody go about becoming a zoo consultant um well uh, uh, quite a few people who've worked in zoos um decide that they they'll do consultancy work um 
and not actually be employed by a zoo. Um, so they're sort of freelancing. Um, you, you obviously have to have quite a lot of zoo experience and a bit of a reputation for other zoos to, to want to consult you. So you've got to have quite a bit of experience under your belt. Um, and you've got to have your areas of expertise and you've got to stick to those really because it's silly trying to be consulted on an area that isn't your expertise. Um, and the, quite a lot of it is usually done abroad. Um, so you probably would want to would enjoy traveling as well. Um, and some people really love it. Um, I did it, I've done it off and on. Um, and I enjoyed some of it. It, it is very hard work though. Um, it's probably easier having a job um, and a salary than, than doing that, but some people really do enjoy it. So like being a consultant at anything, you, you have to have a good reputation and a lot of experience under your belt to, for people to want to take you on and also deliver what, what you're paid to deliver within the timelines that people request. What advice can you give somebody wanting to work with birds of prey? Um, my advice would be just go for it. You know, research it, you know, buy a, a good book, just have a good read, you know, kind of like learn, yeah, learn the basics, you know, kind of the, the terminology, you know, uh, and then just try and find someone in your town, village, maybe not city because it's it's a, it's a big area, but, you know, try and find a, a local falconer that you can kind of like shadow and kind of like go under his or her wing and kind of do some voluntary, you know, uh, even if you're just cleaning pens out and prepping food. That's still a massive part of it. You know, it, like Avery design and how to prep food correctly and the different food used for birds of prey. Because if lo and behold, like after this, you go and volunteer for somewhere in a year's time, you've got your first falcon or hawk or owl or whatever. You know, you've got to understand different foods have different nutritional values. You're still learning stuff, you know. And usually if you like, kind of like stick to it, uh, they kind of invite you over, you know, after you've done your voluntary stuff after the day, uh, you know, they'll invite you over and kind of like, I oh, would, you know, do you want to watch me do this or do you help, <clears throat> would you like to help uh, do this? I mean, everyone's got the internet nowadays, you know, um, look for uh, a local um, falconer or breeder uh, or anything like that. Facebook's a good one, you know, because most falconers now, uh, nowadays uh, are on Facebook. If you've got the passion, if you've got the desire to, to learn about falconry, to learn about birds of prey, money doesn't come into it. That's second, you know, you've already got it. No doubt you, you'll already have a job and you'll do this like on your days off, your weekends or after work or whatever. Um, but you've just got that passion. You just want to learn about it. Um, so it won't be a, a, it won't be an issue. And then fingers crossed, uh, months, years down the line, as you progress, as you build your confidence, you, as you build your experience with birds, with falcons, with birds of prey in general. Um, if you stick it out, nine times out of 10, I know loads of people that started as volunteers at birds of prey centers or uh, falcon farms or uh, pest control workers or whatever. Um, you, you know, you will, if you're wanting it as a job, you know, nine times out of 10, if you show the commitment, show the passion, uh, be a hard worker, you know, show your passion, show your loyalty for the bird. Um, you know, you'll be rewarded with, uh, with uh, employment of, of some sort. I started off as part-time, start, uh, then got bumped up to full-time. And then, you know, the rest is history. I'm, I'm you know, I'm, I'm now where I am uh, because of, of those two main principles, really hard work and, and loyalty, you know, passion for, for, for birds of prey. So yeah, I, I just, like I said, again, just volunteer, do your research, your books, volunteer at a, 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 a good centre uh, or with a good falconer. Uh, you've got to start from somewhere. So, you know, before you know it, five years have gone down the line and, you know, you, you've become something that you've, 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 you know, you've, you've, you only ever dream, uh, dreamt of. So, you know, that's, that's, that's all I can say, really. That's all, that's all the offer. That's all the advice I can offer. Cal, does the Mauritius Project still take volunteers? Uh, yes, we do. But it's, the things have changed a great deal from the days when you were there. 
in the 1990s, people used to come and go all the time and there were no restrictions or very few restrictions. Whereas today, even volunteers have to have work permits. And there's a lot of process involved. And we have to convince the government that uh, if people are coming in from outside, they're not taking a position that could be occupied by young Mauritian. And of course, that's, you know, that, that's the right way to go. But also they put an age limit on it. So nobody comes out to Mauritius these days under the age of 20. And it tends to become quite, it's become quite a bureaucratic process. So it's very difficult to get volunteers into Mauritius. So what we have done is we've developed intern programs and we do get young professionals coming to work with us. And uh, it tends to be a lot more structured. And we have an intern program, which we run through the Durrell Wildlife Conservation Program. But we take far fewer volunteers or interns than we did when you came to Mauritius and we take a lot more young Mauritians, which is fine. And, you know, that's the way it should go. But of course, when we take young Mauritians these days, we, we pay them. So the situation has changed, but we still do take a small number of interns in Mauritius. There are still lots of volunteer opportunities on projects throughout the world, as well as the one in Mauritius. And I urge anyone wants to work in conservation volunteer on programs either in this country or abroad it's essential follow your dreams and i tell everyone this that as you know as you're growing up if you have a great passion you should follow that and do what really inspires you because if you don't i think you're always going to regret it um so you know if you really want to get out there and try and do something do it.